You're listening to the Unsung Podcast, where we talk about classic albums and decide if they deserve that distinction. And we also talk about some unsung classics in the hopes of bringing them to a new audience. And at the end of it all, we let you decide if we are right or wrong. This is the Unsung Podcast. Listening to the Unsung Podcast, episode 12. Last week we spoke about Third by Portishead, and you guys, the public, you decided that it indeed deserves to go into a discography, so thank you to everybody who voted. We're on a total roll, and I think this week's episode might break that roll. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about Cool to Be You by Descendants. I hope you enjoy this one. Before we get into that though, we get a new subscriber this week, a new paying subscriber, so shout out to Neil Thomas, thank you for donating, we super appreciate that. As you can probably tell by last week's episode and this week's episode, we really need to buy some new microphones, so any donation would be super helpful. So think about it, yeah? So let's get into it, this is episode 12. <laughs> I am your host, Mark Fraser, and I'm joined by... <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> was Help me a little, little bit tense. I'll, right. I'll wait to hear what adjective you use for myself and David. Come um, on. To vaguely interesting chaps. Uh, to my right, this vaguely interesting chap is uh, Mr. Chris Cusack, who was the original Milky Bar Kid. <laughs> what happened to the one <laughs> He's aged well. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows how pale I am. I am the whitest guy in the room. I yep. know that. Uh, to my left is David Weaver, who, even though he was offered a set of entirely functional over-ear headphones, has chosen to wear buds, presumably to avoid mussing up that wonderful little white fro that he's got going on. That's me. It's like a, there's, there's, a, there's a joke about you, the Jew, the Jew fro in there. <laughs> But none of us can make. We're not that kind of podcast. Make. Although if we were that kind of podcast, we'd probably have a lot more listeners because <laughs> <laughs> they all right love podcasts. <laughs> we should do a podcast and why the all right love podcasts. We could, we could do that. Do you know what's not all right though? <laughs> uh oh. Cool for you by the descendants. That's not all right. It's not, it's not, not all right. right. It's not alt right. Fucking no. alt rang. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, for it's anyone outside rang, the Scotland, right. it's alt wrong. <laughs> So t- t- tell us about this record, please. This is my favourite Descendants record, and it was my entry point to the Descendants. What's the name of the band? The Descendants or Descendants, depending, <laughs> on, <laughs> depending on how you want to pronounce it. <laughs> the band I've been calling The Descendants, much to your chagrin yeah. since you told me about this. See, I just, you're having such a big influence on me, Chris, that I can't help it. <laughs> I have that effect on a lot of people. <laughs> I, am a... I think it's much like the Royal National Symphony Orchestra, the RNSO. But a lot of people will use the definitive article in front of that, even though it's not in their name. And so descendants, <laughs> the descendants are... Again, I this think band. this is a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a really impressive tangent there, Dave. Well, thanks, thanks very much. much. <laughs> it's South Bank show moment there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so How do you follow that? Yeah, exactly. Presumably I'm... with an album of farting noises. <laughs> well, so let's well, talk about it. There's one song about farting on this record, <laughs> and you're fixated on it. Do you have a problem with bodily functions, Chris? <laughs> I, I actually enjoy openness about bodily functions. I think it's healthy. I don't think it should be a taboo, <coughs> taboo subject. How long have we been doing this podcast? About f- three or four months. I would say that three or four months is still prior to the cut-off point where it's okay to start letting rip. What, prior? like between each other as friends? Yeah, yeah. So when is I the mean, cut-off in point? I mean, any relationship. 
I would still be like, nah, I'm going to hold this one in. I'm going to pretend that I need to go and get something from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so when is the cut So look at this, we've, we've now started talking about farts, <laughs> and it's all because of this album. So justify yourself, Mark, why this album? Because I really like farts. <laughs> <laughs> you like your own farts. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, no, I think, it's a, for me, it's a really interesting accomplishment for a band to come back after not being a band like this for so long and to just knock out the park with a record which I think is really consistent. So they were formed in 77. Yeah, they're, they're that like, is a, I guess, a proper punk band, if you want to put it yeah, that way. That's, that's a while. That's mm. uh, that's 41 years now. Oh, this is like the fourth record or the fifth record, is that right? I can't remember. Go and Google <laughs> uh, really I think it, this was their sixth album. Though. It was Milo yeah. Goes to College, then I Don't Want to Grow Up and Enjoy at all. And then there was, what, 12 years? Of no, nine stuff. years until Everything Sucks. The famous vocalist and cartoon character Milo Ockerman. Mm joined in vocals for this album I believe. no, he came no back. sorry he, he joined in 82 and then he rejoined mm-hmm. right yeah and what's the chronology of it because this band people came and went came and went there so band so they did all which is the descendants records and yeah. then after that milo went to get a, a real job and stopped basically being the band he and went then, to become a biochemist yes yeah. and real job and the realest sense of the word <laughs> a phd in biochemistry yeah, yeah. which uh, would acquaint him with bodily functions and noxious gases yes exactly yeah, and maybe that's why he did it in the first place. Yeah, maybe that's why. Maybe he's not just pure out. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, the band that were left became All, and they had a couple of different guitarists over the years as well. But most, mostly it's just been, what is it, Alvarez and Stevenson, the drummer and the bassist. So yeah. All the all had the guy from Dag Nasty in it? Yeah, Chad. What's his second name? Who is on this record? Price. Incidentally? Chad Price, yeah. Price. He is on this record. Yeah. I was say Parker. Um... Mm. Yeah, I have to be honest, like when we were researching this, I listened to Dag Nasty for the first time and really liked them. Thought they were really good. Oh, really? <laughs> a hell of a lot more than I like The Descendants. <laughs> They're a really good band, Dag Nasty. <laughs> oh, they, they were excellent. Like, I was really impressed with that, and it kind of made me wonder why he stopped doing that to do all. Well, all, I think, I think Dag Nasty just, they only did two records, one of two records, haven't they? I'm not sure. This, this, because of the, complexity of the history of descendant, the Descendants uh, and all and their various comings and goings and Bill Stevenson being in Black Flag and Frank Nevetta dying and all the different bits of chronology that we've tried to, to note down here there are going to be angry punks screaming at their laptops yes as we butcher the timeline that's fine but let's me. just <laughs> let's I'll make our peace with that uh, and accept that we are but this isn't an out. angry punk album. This is a very happy punk this album. This is a very happy punk album, which is another reason why I really like it, because you, I know from experience, Chris, that you don't like happy punk records. So yeah, I like to, you know I that like, shows how little you I know like me. to piss you off. Lately I've been wishing I was brain dead No responsibilities in my head today Baby, let's see what's on the TV Doing nothing, having fun Off the bed to get things done I don't I don't really get happy punk. I don't really get happy music <laughs> unless it's been like ironic as fuck. I really liked um the really early Green Day stuff. Thousand and thirty nine. Mm-hmm. Smoothed out slappy hours and even Kerplunk and stuff like that. I really liked that. Yeah. I still got a soft spot for it. I think there's bits of this as well, in fact, to be fair, two descendants slash the descendants. There's bits of this that you can really hear the influence they had on that early Green Day stuff, as well as a slew of bands that I really don't like, mm. including Blink-182 and NoFX. I think they are definitely a huge influence in pretty much most punk bands that exist now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting that this Apart album, from Bad Religion. I get a lot of Bad Religion on this record. <laughs> Bad Religion were about at the same time know, as these guys, though. Which is really, and Bad Religion had that, you know, you don't mention it, but that album, that second album, which was... Wow. Yeah, but can't even get on Spotify and stuff. It's just we should cool. really antagonise the listenership by putting um, what is it into into the unknown. I think that's what it is. And it no, I can't. I've not heard I, it because I can't hear it because it's impossible to find. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Religion's second shameful album with synths and hard rock songs. I mean, it's really terrible. It's really terrible. But the first album, How Can Hell Be Any Worse, is excellent. And they then went on to be the best SoCal type punk band full stop I've been listening to that. this is a total tangent but I've been listening to a lot of Bad Religion lately because of this record which is weird because it makes you think wow oh, these guys are alright 
Bad Religion are good. <laughs> Bad Religion are really good. The, the best song on this album, actually, I think, is the one where this is a, this is a distinctly apolitical album. <laughs> yes. Uh, scatological. They are at, a distinctly apolitical points. band for the most part. Uh, yeah, and they, I think it's um, is it song Blast Off, mm-hmm. which is actually weirdly one of the better songs musically. It's a bit more Pennywise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about ring sting, mm-hmm. which for listeners outside of Scotland is what happens when you eat something really spicy and then Montezuma's Revenge do a number two yeah mm-hmm. yeah so Blast Off's unfortunately about that and they I think they have like a countdown and then farting mm-hmm. noises in it I mean it's it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> musically it's pretty good But the best tune is the song America. America, yeah. America. America, which is just America. a fucking Whatever. great punk song. Yeah, which is and, and it's political and it's really pretty good. And I was like, it really stood out. I think they released it as an EP before yeah. the album came out as well. So shot their bolt a bit soon there. But um, yeah, I think that was the first time as well that they'd been overtly political in any other subjects. And yeah. I would suggest they should do that more often, maybe. What do I know? I've not been in a band for 40 years. <laughs> I think for all your for all your focusing on on the bodily functions aspect of it, there's a lot of songs in this record which deal explicitly with you know middle age and and all the things that go along with that, like divorce and and um and still and like they they always sung about being nerds mm-hmm. and you know always had that sort of outsider issue yeah well Mass and the other is definitely a hark, a hark, like harken back to their youth because it's all yeah. about I'm going to read you onto the table when I get my thick specs which is I think the line in the chorus <laughs> and that's obviously about like being in the school being back in high school so I guess some shit is deep seated in it <laughs> <laughs> as much as I get that the, the thing that I just can't relate to is that they are in their 40s at this point and they're still making this music and literally going, and I just, I, on, I just can't that. understand it. I like, there's some really great melodies on this, and it's like well played. There's some great playing on this, music. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it is. It's tight. You know, as much as their earlier stuff was maybe loose or, you know, sounded like it was recorded, you know, with a shoe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is well recorded and it's tight and it's, but it's. I still just can't think of you know entitled white middle class men in their 40s playing punk and it's like Jesus fuck I think the only <laughs> do one do something more worthwhile in your lives I think the like only one that's middle class is probably oh. Milo <laughs> why don't you make something like Portishead third <laughs> <laughs> like we talked about last week I, I don't know I just don't get it <laughs> I don't get it so you have been Portishead drop on your album and it's actually got <laughs> <laughs> well yeah they could maybe do some Deconstruction of scatological enterprises. And I was going to try and do the drum beat from Machine Gun. There, <laughs> Josh <laughs> with farts. That should definitely exist. You should. You should make that. Oh wow. So, so one of the things about this, right? The descendants. I'll give them their proper name out of respect for you, Mark. <laughs> um, they are. Uh, they're. They're pretty ubiquitous uh, in terms of any punk lists, that kind of thing, and the the. The Milo character, they always had this cartoon mm-hmm. of Milo. Is it the guy's name Jeff Atkinson? Yeah. Is that the guy that, that did it? It's one of Milo's school friends who originally drew him as a doodle and that became like the cover of the record. It's on the and front then, of this record. And especially mm-hmm. through like, yeah, the, the front of this one, but also Milo goes to college and stuff like that. It was the same kind of image in different scenarios. They're a band that I became very familiar with just from, you know, flicking past them when you're going through CD racks, going to record fairs, that kind of stuff. The, it's readily recognisable. But I'd always thought that it was the Milo Goes to College album that got the nod from most of the kind of super fans. So I'm kind of curious. Yeah. So, so why this one, though? Because this is later period, right? As Dave says, mm-hmm. they're kind of hitting their 40s here. Like, they probably didn't... You wouldn't think they would have the same energy as when they did, you know, some of those mid-80s yeah. records, so... That is but, the, the energy is a big part of it. Like, I wasn't expecting to hear a band this, this sounding this alive... Given, you know, given, given the fact that some of them were not yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Pure choice of words. Those, 
songs are great. Uh, those albums are great. Like Everything Sucks and My Little College are really good records, and they definitely are a bunch of kids making music they want to make that excites them. This is like them taking that but refining it. I think it, it, it's, it definitely sounds weathered. Even the songs about like farting and stuff, they sound weathered. Like it, it's, 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 it's like a band that's been. I mean, with the exception of Milo, the other band that's been on the road since like forever, you know, and they've they've seen and done it all really. Mm. And I think the songwriting is the same also level. with the exception of Milo, who didn't do it all. Yeah. <laughs> hey! <laughs> that's a pun for anyone that's a fan of this band. <laughs> Sorry, I totally cut you off there. Just It's okay. Uh, and I just appreciate the fact that they came back and did another great record. And not, it doesn't sound like they lost a step, despite the fact that Milo hadn't been in the band for about 10 years. Yeah, like, how did they work it out? Because I believe the vocalist that had been singing basically stepped aside, right? He, he still took part in some of the writing. Yeah. But he literally was just like... Ah, uh, Daddy's back, and just kind of took a back seat. Well, the way the way it works is to go back to something we were talking about earlier on. Is after this end is recorded, all the band wanted to work. Well, my look and playing well, the band wanted to work with this other guy called Dave, who was the original singer of the first All Records, mm-hmm. and they decided to not split up the band just to have a different singer and call it a different band. So they didn't sack Milo or anything. It was just like we want to keep making music. Always a little bit more aggressive. It's definitely not as you know focused on the same stuff as the Descendants is. And then he left and then Chad joined and then they spent a lot of their time, all spent a lot of time with Chad as a vocalist. Both Chad and Dave are on this record. I actually think Chad has got a couple of songwriting credits on this as well. Yeah, I mean, I read that the guy that stepped aside... Chad Price, I think, I'm pretty sure was. Yeah, so, so mm-hmm. he kept a hand in, though, with some of the songwriting on yeah. it. And it was apparently it was very amicable the way he did it. And that's, it's no small feat in itself, I guess. I think, I mean, if you... If you I think it's a really good way of doing it, isn't it, really? I mean... Milo obviously wanted to pursue a career. I mean, he, Milo went to college. You know I mean, and he got his PhD, and he got a big, he got a job working for Big Pharma. That's enough to sustain your family. And now he's quit his job. You know, with the last record, at least in 2016, like he quit his job, and now they're going to be like a proper full time band again. Presumably because he made a, a killing in Big Pharma. Yeah, <laughs> with EpiPens. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> his band should have used some of them. <laughs> oh, jeez! I know you what. I walked right into that one. That's mental. You okay, did. You, so you brought that on yourself. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So that was an accidental bit of like <laughs> morbid humour there. Uh, Frank Nevetta died of diabetic, uh, diabetic coma, coma <laughs> I believe, in 2008. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, that, that, to be fair, they're a band that's had a wee bit of tragedy, but I guess if you're a band that's been a band for this length of time, there people is going to die, man. Yeah. People do die. But Bill Stevenson, who was also in Black Flag and was a pretty clean living guy, mm-hmm. had a pretty hellish time of it, didn't he? Yeah, he had a brain tumour. And that caused him to gain weight and get diabetes and all that and stuff for sleep up now and then apparently had open heart surgery recently and still a beast of a drummer. Still one of the best record producers for punk for this kind of punk music that exists right now. The Blasting Room in Colorado with him and Jason Livermore has like produced so many of my greatest my favourite records. A lot of my favourite bands have been through there, you know. He's a really good songwriter, he's a really good arranger of songs, he knows exactly how to make shit sound good. And it translates to this record. This is the first record they recorded with him as well. Is it? The first mm-hmm. or ten is the second record recorded in the blast room with Bill Stevenson at the, at the helm. What was the... Because I know they, they did a jump to Fat Wreck as well. Yeah. Fat Mike's infamous punk label would what was the transition because were they on epitaph at one point yeah uh, i think that i think the first couple of re- i think the first couple of records were on epitaph they're on epitaph now all oh, right so they were on it, they were on interscope and then they were unhappy with that so they went to epitaph mm. and then from epitaph fat mike was like you're my favorite band of all time yeah because he's still been a band by this point yeah. so and fat mike is on this right re- is created in this record as sequence and assistant whatever that means probably just hung about the studio and you know <laughs> got, got smashed and said this song should just go here instead of there said crap things like he does. Yeah, he made sure his mohawk was up straight and <laughs> took his kids to school and all that and went and played golf and shit like he does. If you like what you have heard, then please consider donating some money to this podcast because for the past few weeks we've literally cobbled together the gear out of whatever we could find. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds Bad but true. pretty strange. <laughs> so we would like to actually pur- purchase some nice nice smelling and uh, nicely usable equipment. 
so please go to www.unsungpod.net slash donate and give us some money you can donate as much as you want you can donate monthly if you want or you can do a one-off donation any of that stuff would be really appreciated so that we can continue to bring you a high quality product Have you seen the? Um, I, I read that there was a documentary. I've not seen filmage. Filmage, yeah. So that's it. about descendants and all, and all mm. as well. By the way, the the all thing. Uh, I noticed that the descendants had their little Milo drawing. All were like not to be outdone. So they got this little drawing of Allman. Yeah, all, Allman. Which is, is that his name? Yeah, so weird. Uh, and it's like it's absolutely exactly Bart Simpson. Yeah. Like, I mean, it is <laughs> like. And they're like, oh, we didn't know who Bart Simpson was. And it's like, all right, so The Simpsons was on the Tracy Ullman show. <laughs> <laughs> and you called this, I don't think it's Ullman. Yeah. Is, is that, is that mm-hmm. the name of the character? Ullman, yeah. And, and he just absolutely looks exactly, I mean, no way, man. No way. I, I tend, shit kid, guys. I tend to think of them both as the same band, basically. That's the way I approach it. I'm not a huge fan of all, because they do sound different from Descendants. I mean, have you read the all logistics thing? You know, no. You know, that, right, so like, I'm not keen on them, so that's why I've not really... I right, don't really so know. I, I, I was kind of digging into it a little bit. Apparently, all the reason they called the album all when they were Descendants was because... Uh, who's the name of the drummer? <laughs> it's just another member of the band that died, is it not? In fact, a guy not dying in a fishing trip. It's another old bass player. Or his old bassist. Right, so, Bill so like, has always been a drummer. Yeah, so like um, one of the original members right, had created this like self-help mantra <laughs> and uh, it was called All Logistics and it was just... St- Dumb stuff like I think one of them was "Thou shalt not suppress flatulence," <laughs> um, and just things like that for like how to live a productive and apology-free, flatulence-rich life, <laughs> and um, doing the utmost, achieving the utmost. Apparently, ah, like there you go, absolutely, that's right. Yeah. So, and and then that became the title of the album, and then they basically formed a band to try and live by all logistics, which mm. is like there's a little bit of a Scientology vibe in there. Yeah, so supposedly that's the, the thinking process behind the name All. I think a lot of Descendants fans are probably going to be going mental at us because we can't get the chronology, chronology of this band. Yeah, but I did make right. a caveat earlier on that, yeah. it, was, that it was like, we're going we're gonna to chew this Because there was an right awful close before, <laughs> in between Dave Small and Chad Price. <laughs> okay. There was a guy called Scott as well. <laughs> Just like, one name. I can't remember his surname. <laughs> he wasn't there long enough for, that, for them to bother getting his <laughs> Scott second. Reynolds, I think it's Scott Reynolds his name was. Um, so all have had like more singers than Descent. I mean, as a whole thing, it's like punk rock is just interchangeable, really. If you're not a dick about it, do you know what I mean? People can come in and just add their voice. Just do the drum beat. Just do the bit, you know? And that's, what, that's another reason chords. why I love the band so much is because they very much embrace the kind of modular nature of being in a band. If, if life gets in the way or, you know, people die because punk isn't exactly a healthy and rich lifestyle. Is this the first one they recorded live? Yeah. Is that right? Because I know there's like That's a kind lot, of Bill's MO. A lot of people are pretty sniffy about the quality mm. of the recordings by Descendants, and I think this one kind of got the thumbs up, but yeah. I do... Bill's MO is pretty much to do that, like live in the studio as much as possible, and overdub if needed. And is that part of why you think it's it pushes it above, like I said, Milo Goes to College, for example, which is pretty well thought of? To be honest, I never really consider it how live it sounds when I listen to a record. Like It's not something I've ever taken into consideration, if that makes sense. I but like, you, you get the energy from yeah, that. Yeah, you do get the energy. Say, and I think, I think a lot with of this, punk, it must be hard to replicate that energy if you're just overdubbing to like a thing in your headphones. Well, we did speak about that with the Foo Fighters album, didn't we? Like how, <laughs> how it felt. Oh, hey, by the way, talking of which, Dave Grohl loves this band. Of course he does. He's Dave Grohl. And he was in farts. He's, he's a hardcore kid, man. Happy like, Dave. He's a big kind of jokey, horse smile Dave. Of course he loves farts. I think this is the most accomplished record they've, they've done. It's the most accomplished sound than they've ever been. And it is the best sound in the ever been. And when I fall, I fall down hard. When will I ever learn? Don't take your dreams to heart. You'll only wind up getting burned. The, the, what, there was one album after, is it Hypercaf? Hyperspaz and Caffeine. Yeah, which is it's got the word spaz in it. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, yeah, they they're got not bit, changing their ways. They got a bit of flack for that. <laughs> I bet they did. And in, in the UK specifically. For the, the title of the record, 
they decided yeah, to it came out it, a year but... and a half ago mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> great cool <laughs> Product and it's, that's time. also that, that 18 record 18 months is, ago man you could get away with anything 18 oh, months I ago I remember man. those days <laughs> Good, uh, you could get away with more now though <laughs> arguably <laughs> depending on who you are well, certain countries eh? yeah. um, but that record's a lot faster than this actually the new record is a lot quicker than this. there's more songs there's more songs on it for sure but it's a lot a lot of faster songs on it as well Jinx um, I thought they might have slowed down why would you? Don't know. An Into the Unknown. Is that right? Is it Into the I Unknown? I think it's Into the Unknown. Is it? David, can... I don't know. Can you look up? I don't have the internet. Oh, for God's sake. I've just got my facts. We'll find out and edit it in. <laughs> it's been overdub in a completely different voice. <laughs> oh, are you talking about By Bad Religion? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's... The Into the Unknown, aye. That's right. And then there's yeah. one Back to the Known. Into they, the Unknown. They tried to... They desperately the tried to backpedal their yeah. mess. EP after Out it, of yeah. the Known. Oh, Back to the Known. Back to the known. Um, yeah, they should have went back to the known. Because half the band quit. <laughs> half the band quit when they said they were going to do that record. And they just like, no, fuck this. So it's just like Brett and Greg that were left. <laughs> Brett was using a lot of heroin at the time as well, probably. And then they, then they phoned them up. They phoned them up to get them to come back for supper, and they all did. <laughs> we'll probably cover this at some point. I think. <laughs> yeah, I can probably. see supper appearing in this list. There's got to be no control, right? Really? I thought we were going to end up having an argument with this because I I wanted to really upset you by saying Stranger in Fiction. <laughs> I, I, I've been listening to a lot of bad drugs lately and it's definitely no control, I think. Uh, maybe. But so far it's fucking good too. And Stranger in Fiction's not bad. Stranger in Fiction's great, but it would just really upset everyone because it's signed to a major label. Anyway, yeah. this is about Descendants, yeah. not about bad religion. <laughs> we're getting away from the point. So, <laughs> so are we going to put Suffer into our alternate <laughs> discography? <laughs> Side pull. I don't believe in unity. It's just one more abandoned dream. Once the people get together, it's easy to see. It's just a matter of time before they come after me. I think a lot. Another thing I've said it before, and I will say it again, is this is a band which have grown up, and in some ways. <laughs> Like there's a, there's we a, called an album Spazzinate and they've grown No, but there's a lot there's a lot of songs on this record we still about, you know, being middle aged and all the shit that comes along with it. You know, One More Day is a really sad song about like Farting. <laughs> Farting, obviously. <laughs> Farting when they come out. And there's Cool Cooly Be You as well, which is A ballad. A ballad. But I mean that's about, about being about not being in touch with family anymore, do you know what I mean? And all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of interest in Would you stay in touch with your dad if he was <laughs> sixty year old singing about farts? <laughs> You've even said very much in this conversation. I don't really don't have much to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, like, I do get that it's tight and that it's got great melodies and it's fun, but, like, I don't, I, I'm, uh, <laughs> just, I'm not feeling it. I'm just never going to listen to it. I'm like, never, I'm oh, literally Jimmy, never going to listen to is it. Is that your dad? Is that your dad? <laughs> what one? That one. The one he keeps going on about farting. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your dad? Why are you going that funny colour? <laughs> well, I love this record, so fuck you guys. That's fine. Fuck I can totally get it. I mean, That's... I'm not. A, I've never been a punk. When I was in a band in high school, the, <laughs> all my pals would listen to No FX, and I'd be sitting in the corner listening to Corn. Well, it's just been my life. It's still my life. So I just don't get it. it so it's mess. fine. Aye, I was the list. opposite. Like I was the guy that was listening to punk, and all my pals were sitting in the corner listening to corn. Aye. Well, we should have swapped. <laughs> <laughs> but I so I guess we're going to say. I mean, we've see only... what the punters say. I think. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. We've only been going for twenty five minutes. So it was a punk episode. That's <laughs> ah, a quick. This is more quick <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I like a lot of this record, and you guys don't, and that's fine. The public are probably going to disagree with me, and if they disagree with me, it'll be the first time I've been wrong. So. Ever in your on this, life. On, this, on this podcast, <laughs> every single thing I said should or should not go in has or has not went in. Yeah, that's fair. I think they'll, it'll be interesting to find out if they know what side their bread's buttered on. Because to be honest, this podcast isn't going up online unless you do it. So <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> because none of us have the technical prowess. Don't worry about it. Okay, you are the gatekeeper though, so I hope you get your way. Well, we need to talk about this. <laughs> We can't come to a decision on this, I guess. So I'm going to say yes. Oh, I've come to a decision. Yeah. <laughs> no. We can't come to a unanimous decision, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know, Dave. But all we can do is uh, tell the public how to vote. We Which don't have the final decision anyway, yeah. so. 
I think you should vote yes. But I would also not be bothered if you voted no because there are there are <laughs> there are there are, are descendant triggers which are just That's as good. the way. Really get behind it. <laughs> but I love it. It's my favourite descent. I reckon I think that's the descendant record more than any other descendant records by far. So I would put it in. Can't say fairer than that. Don't worry. Gentlemen, what are we going to do next week? Next week, we are doing Carpe Diem by Will Haven. Mm. I like it. Mm, gravy. That's all gravy. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating conversation, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be just pure disagreeable to get us back. <laughs> oh, that, and I don't think it's that good. Oh, uh, we'll see. But yeah, uh, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, go and like and subscribe on iTunes. Yeah, please review us. And because review us, we could yeah. do with some of them. And uh, yeah, we do need some reviews, so go and do that if you haven't done it already. <laughs> we would appreciate that. And go and go and vote on Facebook for this record to go to the canon, because obviously it should. Thanks, bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>